we've been making great progress with JavaScript. And today we're going to talk about a collection type called an array. Okay. And arrays are not um, unique to programming. Like, you know, there, there are arrays in the world, you know, a collection of things. And uh, we're going to have uh, arrays in pretty much all of our programs that we're ever going to build um, uh, professionally that's going to be on the web. You're always going to have arrays uh, in all of your programs. You don't, it's almost nearly impossible to work uh, without them. So let's talk about what they are and why they're important. So I'm going to comment this stuff out. Actually, let's, yeah, let's just comment it out here. Cool. And uh, we'll go down a little bit just for fun. Okay. We're building an app. Let's say it's uh, a portal for a teacher at a school, and she's got a list of students she needs to maintain. You know, when, uh, you know, Timmy's in the back, you know, pulling on someone's hair, you know, she needs to know how to, you know, give him a bad mark for the day uh, so the parents can see and they can beat him with a stick. So how do we do that? Well, let me show you the wrong way to, to build an app like that. You know, we wouldn't want to have a bunch of variables like this where we're like, you know, student one equals Timmy var student two equals Janessa var student three equals Arun and uh, so on and so forth, especially if we have 30 students or a million students, you know, maybe the, it's for a bunch of schools and that's not really practical, is it? To do something like that, it doesn't make sense and uh, it's gonna be very hard to distinguish uh, who's in the class, okay? There's a better way. You know how like in those commercials, like, you know, someone's all depressed, like the medicine commercials and the clouds are coming in and you know, it's like, now with this new pill, there's a better way. That's kind of how it is when you learn new stuff in programming. The clouds of darkness go away. Var. What do you want to call it? Right? You can call it anything. It's just a variable. So let's call this students. That makes sense. Okay. And to create an array of students, we use these square braces here. And we can now say Timmy, comma, Janessa, comma, Arun. Okay. This is kind of cool. So now we don't even need these here. So we've got a list of students, okay? And uh, later when you learn about loops, you'll learn how you can actually go through the array uh, and get all the names out as needed. Uh, but let's talk about how to get just one or two names out. First things first, let's make sure this is this is working as expected. So let's say console.log, we're gonna put students in here. All right, let me right click this index.html file, show in Finder, I'm gonna double click this here, bring it over, and uh, command alt j or control alt j for the console so it printed out and there's an array timmy janessa and arun okay so it's definitely working it's printing out the whole array which is great so what we want to do now is figure out how to access uh, individual elements so here we go so you know we got timmy okay and timmy was really bad today okay uh so we need to put uh, var naughty list so this is another array equals and we're going to make it an empty array, okay? Nothing in it. So Timmy, you know, he pulled on Janessa's hair, and she cried. Um, this is a tough college class, okay? And so what we're going to do is say naughty list dot push, okay? And how do we get Timmy out of that first array? Well, we know he's at index zero, okay? All arrays in programming always start at zero, never at one, okay? Always start at zero, all right, so if you ever get confused, oh, how long is my array? Where should I be grabbing the index? Always remember, it always starts at zero. So naughty list that push, we're gonna say students, square braces, zero. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing the array, the students array, and using the square braces, and then we put the index that we wanna grab out of it. Of course, Timmy's at index zero, Janessa is at one, she's the victim, and Arun is uh, at index two. Okay, and if this is confusing to you at all, we could have done this as well. Bad kid equals students zero. So all I did was remove it out of here, and we put it in uh, a variable here called bad kid. Uh, but it doesn't make sense to store this variable here because uh, we only need it once right here. Okay, so students zero. So that's how we grab an item out of the list. Okay, and so what we can do is let's console.log our naughty list. And let's see who's in it, if anybody. So let's go find our browser. 
Let me minimize this here. There it is. Refresh the page. Command R, Control R. And sure enough, Timmy is in the naughty list. So what did we do? We had a list of students called students. It's an array. And we created another array. This time it was empty. And we called it naughty list. And then we pushed Timmy into the naughty list, OK? Because he was really, really bad. Now, Timmy's not that bad of a kid, OK? He just, he's got some behavioral problems, but he also does lots of good things. So uh, while well, Timmy pulled on Janessa's hair, he actually opened the door for Arun. It was really nice to him, you know? And so the teacher's like, well, I think I want to take him off the naughty list. But how do you remove, how do you remove elements out of an array? And it's a little bit of work, OK? There's no, like, there's no remove Timmy in an array type of thing. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to remove elements from an array, and this is um, you can use this for removing one or more things out of an array. So let's do it now. So we're going to do var index equals. I'm going to say naughty list dot index of. We're calling a function. We haven't really talked about those yet, and we're going to say um, index of Timmy. Okay, so it's going to go through the list and try and find Timmy. And if it finds it, it's going to give us the index of this person. Uh, and then we can use that to remove it from the list. Okay, so if it doesn't find the element, okay, index is going to be negative one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say if index is greater than negative one, okay, then what do we do? We're going to say naughty list equals okay and then we're going to say naughty list dot splice think of splice like cutting okay we're going to splice it at the index and we only want to remove one element okay so again index this is a variable it's going to put a number in here okay it's going to go through the naughty list okay and we use the index of function this is a special keyword it's a function of an array and it's going to search for timmy if it finds timmy Okay, it's going to store what index he's at. So 0, 1, or 2. So we should expect this to actually say, um, if I print this out here and I print the index, we should expect this to say 0. Let's refresh the page and see. Sure enough, there's 0 right there. Okay, so Timmy's at index 0. And if you don't believe me, um, you know what we can also do is we can say, just for fun, var index 2 equals students dot index of let's find a rune and we would expect index two if I print it down here to be what well zero one two so that should be two I'm gonna save it and refresh and sure enough a runes at two okay so it's definitely working it's giving us the proper index which is great okay so now what we're doing here is we're saying if index is greater than negative one okay so let's actually let's Let's show it with the wrong thing. So we're going to say we forgot the Y on Timmy. So it's just Tim. OK. Let me remove that there so we can print the right thing. Um, this should be negative 1 when I refresh the page. And it is. Negative 1 mean it means it couldn't find it. OK. So we're making good progress. So let's put the Y back on here. OK. So if index is greater than negative 1, so we're running a conditional statement here. If this is greater than this, then do this. So uh, zero is definitely greater than negative one. So what we're doing is we're saying naughty list equals naughty list dot splice. Now splice is another function on an array, and it's going to cut it. It's going to find the starting index, and it's going to cut how many spaces. So if I wanted to get rid of three space or uh, three elements, I would do a three. But we just want to get rid of one. Okay, we want to get rid of Timmy, and it's going to take that and create a new array. Okay, and it's going to put it back into the old array. I know that sounds a little bit weird. Okay, but the operator is going to start here on the right hand side. Okay, so it's going to grab the naughty list, which has one element in it. It's going to cut, uh, cut this element out, and it's going to give us a new array. And then we're sticking that new array and replacing the old one. Okay, so this could also have been something like this. I could have said var new naughty list is an empty array, right? And then I could have said, you know, new naughty list equals that one and then the old naughty list would actually still be the same but that doesn't make sense because we want to override it okay so naughty list dot splice index and one okay so we are saying start at zero. Zero is the place we want to start because that's where timmy is and we just want to we want to cut timmy off the naughty list because he's a good kid now okay 
And so now if we print out, so we'll do something fun here. So we'll print the naughty list after we remove it and we'll also print it before. Okay, so console.log the naughty list like so. So at this point right here, we should see Timmy. Okay, and at this point we should see an empty list. I've saved it here. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. We got, okay, so this first one here has a length of zero. And the second one here, it has Timmy on here. Oh, I know why, I know why this looks funky here. Um, I told you the wrong thing. So uh, this is not returning a new array. This is returning the array of the elements we removed. So when we print up, when we print this up, it's saying, "Hey, you removed this element," and then it's putting it back in. What we should have done is is actually this. We should have not had the equal sign here. Okay, like so, and then that'll actually just change it in place. That's what that's what's going on here. So from the top, from the top, var index equals naughty list index of Timmy. So we find the index. Okay, we know it's zero. So at this point, we're gonna print the naughty list. Timmy's gonna be in there, okay? And then at this point here, we're saying if the index is greater than negative one, then let's cut it out of the list right here. So when we print it this time, there will be zero elements in it. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, and as expected, we've got Timmy here and an empty array right here, okay? So you add by using the push keyword, which we've done here, and you remove by grabbing the index of the element you want to remove and then splicing it. Now, you don't typically do this uh, very often. Um, when you're working with arrays, uh, let me teach you some best practices here. This is across all programming languages. Arrays are linear, okay? If you go through an entire array, it's going from top to bottom and it could take a very long time. I mean, if you had a, an array with a million elements in it and you had to get an element that's at 999,999, your program's gonna be running for quite some time. And so doing things like this is never usually a good idea. It's gonna search through the array until it finds Timmy and it uh, can be a very slow process. And so as a beginner programmer, Splice, you're gonna use it uh, occasionally here and there. Uh, as you get more advanced, you know, you're not gonna be using arrays and removing things out of them. Arrays will probably more so store data for you uh, than manipulating them over and over again. There's better ways of, of managing data when you have to keep changing it. So uh, this is good stuff though. Uh, one more thing I wanna point out is that the uh, the splice command or the function splice function okay uh, it's not supported in Internet Explorer seven or eight if anyone's still using that out there I, I mean people still highly use this uh, function here but and no one seems to care about Internet Explorer seven or eight anymore but just so you know uh, it doesn't really support it uh, or it does not support that I know so uh, what have we done so far okay we've talked about uh, taking data that is repetitive and making it a little bit less repetitive, okay? We put we put these students in an array. Now this could be anything. This could be bank accounts, uh, bank account balances with a bunch of balances on here. Uh, anything you could think of that you could put in a collection uh, should go into this collection, it's an array. Uh, and then we create an empty array for the naughty kids, okay? And we put a student in there, which of course is Timmy, all right? Then we find his index, and then we remove Timmy, and then we print it up. All right, now arrays don't have to just store strings. Okay, like I said, it could be bank account balances like so. So var balances equals, you know, we could say 50.45, or we could say, you know, 4,000.22 or 12, <laughs> or if you're a, a college student, it's probably looking more like this, okay? Uh, you, can, you, you can work with numbers. You can also work with mixed types as well too. You know, we could uh, do something like this var um, person and we could say John and then his age is 12 and um, his uh, country of origin you know is USA right um, is he cool true or false right so you can put different data types in there and if we run a program we're not gonna get any errors or anything it just it runs fine but this is a, a big no-no Okay, I'll tell you that right now. There's a better way of working with mixed data types, and that's working with objects, which we have not talked about yet. But never, ever, 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 ever use mixed types of data inside of an array. Always keep an array of the same data type. And this is, this is really important. This is one of the things where JavaScript is very open and that people are like, oh, it's cool. But this is where it gets nasty because if you start doing things like this, you don't know what's in the array. If another programmer came on, okay, and was accessing your array from somewhere else, they weren't looking at this code right here, but maybe on a different a different code file, 
and they're like, oh, I'm going to grab that array, he may not know that there's strings and that there's numbers and that there's booleans in there. Okay, it's very bad. Very, very, very bad. Um, and so we want to get rid of this. And we also want to be more representative of what's in the data. So, you know, students, that's probably not the best because these are just strings. So maybe this should be student names. So we know that there's going to be names in here. Or balances, you know, that's probably fine because these are numbers, you know, balances. Um, and so student names. And so we would want to change the uh, this to student names. Okay. So be representative of uh, what's actually in there so people can understand it. Uh, we've talked about pushing uh, and removing. And there's a lot more you can do with arrays. Uh, and we'll, we'll dive into that. And we'll be able to loop through them and do other things like that too. So I think this is good for now. There's a lot to take in. Um, but this is good stuff. And it's foundational. And you'll carry this for the rest of your programming career. So that's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you later.